good setup here. All right, um, I'm LaVon Woods. I'm the creative game builder studio. Please forgive me. I'm getting over a cold here. <clears throat> um, game builder studio is, is a, is a 2D cross platform tool for you guys to, to pretty much build to make it easier for you to, to build cross platform games that go on online on mobile devices. Um, and, uh, there's a number of reasons why you may, you know, you may need Game Builder Studio. If you're a designer that, uh, you know, that, that may not have programming skills and you want to create a game, maybe you're a developer and you don't, you don't really know much about creating games, or uh, maybe you just don't want to deal with GPU rendering. Maybe you're, you're an action script developer and you don't really want to learn um, uh, native, uh, you know, different native code to, to to write for each platform that you want to deploy to. And of course, there's a, you know, the glaring problem of all these different devices and getting your game on these different devices. Well, Game Builder Studio is trying to remove a lot of the technical challenges and a lot of these barriers away um, by providing an easy uh, visual interface for you uh, to, to quickly put together a game and actually deploy that game uh, uh, to, to many different platforms. We've created a, a tool that's both designer and developer friendly, um, and it's cross-platform on both the client side and in terms of publishing. So you can use this on both Windows and Mac. Um, you can, if you're a designer, you can develop your, you can build your game completely in editor, visually, and you know, if you have some some coding skills, you can actually drop down into code um, and customize your game and access the the visual objects that you put together in the editor. You can actually access that directly from the code. So it's a really powerful platform. Um, all project files, the the, the uh, uh, level files and stuff like that are all XML based. Um, so you can actually share it in a team. You can commit it uh, to a, a version control system and um, you know, you know, and share project files. So it's, uh, it's very powerful in that. Um, there, there's, there's an additional piece to this, uh, the, the tool and, and the companion to the tool is going to be the, uh, game builder marketplace. The game builder marketplace is soon to be launched. You'll be able to find additional, um, plugins, um, that will offer various, uh, uh, functionalities and game mechanics and uh, you know access to different services out there um, the number one being the uh, the most recent one coming is the uh, player IO plugin which allow which will allow you to do uh, to build multiplayer games you can actually build a chat inside of game Builder studio you can actually um, you know build a turn-based game uh, you know and send real-time messages across across the wire um, Using this plugin for Game Builder Studio and the the backend service of Player.io, and they have a free account, so you can, you know, up to up to like ten thousand users or something like that. Um, it's free, so it's great for you to try out and, and actually test your game with. Uh, and then if you actually your game your your game really takes off, then of course you'll be able to afford uh, their service, and then you'll also be able to to grab art packs and things like that from from the marketplace. Uh, let's see. I want to get into some important concepts and terminology. Game Builder Studio um, is pretty straightforward. Uh, we try to keep the interface very simple. Uh, there's some initial terminologies that you need to understand. Uh, so, let, so I'm going to go over that. I'm going to try not to do too much of a deep dive for this presentation. And after I go through a, little, a few of these important concepts, I'll kind of pause for uh, for some a few quick questions if you guys want um, but I, I don't want to take up too much of your time so uh, an important concept in game builder studio is every game object is an entity it's a blank container uh, that holds uh, different components that are put together to define a, uh, uh, to define different types of game objects 
and every component kind of specializes and has a, a certain area of, of uh, specialty. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. You can come in here, create a, uh, a basic 2D game, and you just drop in a quick object. And this is just a, a simple entity. It just has a spatial and a render on it. The entity is just the container itself. The uh, component uh, components are the building blocks, building blocks of these entities. Uh, like I said, they handle specific uh, uh, functionality. Every entity in Game Builder Studio currently comes with a spatial, and that handles the position of where the entity is in the in world in the world uh, of your game, uh, rotation, things like that. And this spatial is directly attached to a render. So these are pretty much bound uh, hand in hand together. So you, you have on the spatial, you can control which render it can it, it overrides and it controls, and on the render you can define which spatial it controls. So you can actually add multiple renders um, in here and have it be controlled. Let's see, uh, call it additional render, and you can have it controlled. Uh, do a shape. Right now you don't see it because it's it's uh, it's not attached to a spatial, but I'm going to change the color to red, make it a square. I'm going to give it a size 100 by 100, and it defaults to the top left corner of the screen because that's zero zero coordinates. Um, but the minute I do this and define the, the control and spatial, it will then uh, map it to the position of this spatial. And then I can start to do things like affect the registration point, which will determine where, you know, where the, where the, uh, the kind of centerpiece of this uh, sprite lies. Or I can use an offset if I want. It just depends on what you want to do, what you're trying to do. Already, uh, so so that's that's components, and you can just keep adding. You can just keep adding a bunch of uh, components. We're gonna have a better viewer for this instead of just a list. We're gonna have a, a browser, like a, a component browser, for you to actually um, see the components uh, and and get like a little bit of an explanation of what each one does. But there's there's a ton of components in here for different rendering functionality for. Uh, you know, sprite sheets for doing parallax uh, type of effects, scrolling, which is like a tile, a tiled render that can actually scroll, repeating background. Um, there's, there's a bunch of them. Um, that's uh, so that's uh, components. So let's see. Now another important concept is uh, the expression. An expression in, in Game Builder Studio is a dynamic value that is that, that is mapped to different uh, different properties in your game, and you and, and it's evaluated at runtime. So, if you wanted to calculate um, some algebraic equation, or you wanted to um, just reference the current position of where an object is, and you wanted to offset it by a hundred pixels or, or what have you, the only way for you to do that is to do it uh, via an expression. Otherwise, you'd have to manually enter values. So, um, for example, let me add a uh, rule component. In here, and then I'm going to add an action that has, um, let's just call it a change property. Let's just use a change property action. Now, you can use different values in here to set properties. Uh, I'm going to choose expression. And what it's going to do is present this little E icon that will, if you click on it, it will open up the expression editor. And this will give me this little editor that has some helpers. So I can set a point. If I double click on it, it will put inside here the, the, uh, the point method for me to actually return a point uh, or set a point to a, a point property. Point properties are values that hold x and y coordinates, and uh, it's used for position and size and things like that. There's math functions in here uh, for calculating tangents, um, you know, all kind of stuff, cosine, sine, 
And then you actually have access to some global game properties, uh, like the position of the mouse, the current virtual time, the screen size, and the current level and the, the maximum levels. And there'll be varying, uh, there'll be different properties that'll be added to this um, as well. And then you can actually um, access uh, an entity directly. So if you had two entities in here, let me just jump out of here and create another one. And I call it, you know, box two. If I, uh, if I open this expression editor again, you can reference from one entity to another, you can reference its properties if you wanted to. And it will actually use this expression that there's a helper method called entity. And in quotes, you put the name of the entity you're referencing. It'll, uh, you put dot the component name, dot the property, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is a, this is a way to, to, to write an expression. You can say, I want to reference that, that uh, entity's position plus, you know, 200 pixels or something. So that's a dynamic equation that you can write. Now, property references are not so uh, are not necessarily dynamic. They are more of just static addresses of where properties exist um, inside your game. So, the syntax for a property reference is is different than an expression. Um, an absolute path to a property is the syntax is the pound sign the name of the entity, dot, the component, dot, the property. And a relative reference means that you can, you can only use relative property references when you're trying to reference properties within the same entity. If you try, and, and, by, and the way to do that is by using the ampersand uh, uh, sign. So if you want to reference the renderer on an existing entity from a rules component, you would just use the at symbol. And you'll notice that this little icon here, this little target icon is the property browser and it indicates that this field is a property reference um, uh, field. So you can open this up, point to, um, point to another, another object, reference its, its X position and the syntax will be presented for you. It's recommended that if you're going to reference properties within the same entity, always do it relatively because if you change the name of the entity by going to layers and you change this to box one, you don't want things to break. If, if, you, if, you, if you're referencing things uh, relatively using the at symbol, uh, your logic won't break because it, it'll always be referencing the uh, current property. Um, based on what's what's on the uh, on the entity and it won't actually have the, the name of the entity inside of the, the property reference. So that's just a, um, a good practice to, to go by. All right. Um, so th those are those are pretty much uh, a few a few concepts. Um, I'm not really going to cover actions too much, but but actions are pretty much triggerable um, functionality that you can that you can trigger based on conditions or without any conditions. It'll just auto trigger um, based on different you know different things. Whether you want to change a property, constrain a property, interpolate a property means tweening or animating a property. So you can transition a color from red to black, or you can transition a value from one to ten or what have you. You can simulate input by, if you wanted this to be a button, you could you know, simulate an input action and so on and so forth. We'll, there'll be more deep dive sessions about various topics, but uh, I want to keep this more of a high level um, view of things. So are there any, uh, are there any questions so far? I'd like to see if uh, anyone has any. You can always raise your hand in this uh, in the webinar to uh, to alert me, and I'll do my best to kind of pay attention to that. 
Okay, no questions. All right, um, so moving along. Cloning entities. In Game Builder Studio, uh, the cloning functionality is, is really great because it, it allows you to reduce duplicate game logic. You can create entities and then uh, create uh, duplicates of that that are just variations. They're, they're, they're just uh, slightly variations to the original. And you can do it on a component by component basis. So it's very powerful for you to, to if you have like five components and you just want to unlock the render and change the color, then you could do that. So uh, let me get rid of these. And let me keep this one. And then if I hit the Command D or Control D of your Windows, and I duplicate this, uh, you'll see this little arrow indicator up here on the top left, um, and that points back to the original. It'll always uh, take you back to the original. And as you can see now, this render is locked, and the properties are locked. The only thing that's not locked is the spatial because you want to maintain the position of where the duplicate is. So uh, if you if you're uh, uh, duplicating objects and you see that this is not locked, that's why. The, the spatial has to remain unlocked. Now, if I want to slightly change this, I only have two components on this, but if I wanted to slightly change this, I would just unlock it and change the color. If I had more properties, I mean more components on this, all of those other components would remain, remain locked. And at any point in time, if I want to revert or go back, I just hit revert to source, and it'll revert it right back to what the original was and lock uh, everything back to where it was. So a really, really powerful um, and, and a, a real-time saver. And you can actually copy this and actually paste it and duplicate it across levels as well. From the uh, project settings, and at the, I mean the project menu at the top, you go to, uh, what is it, scene and then uh, uh, copy, then you can paste clone in the, in the next level. Okay. Importing animations. Animations in Game Builder Studio are primarily achieved via sprite sheets. Um, reasons for sprite sheets, uh, there are a number of technical reasons for sprite sheets, um, which I'm sure we have some developers on here, so, so you, you, you pro you're probably aware, but it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a faster way to, uh, to, to get your assets and your images loaded up to the GPU. Game Builder Studio now supports GPU rendering, so when you, uh, when you compile as much of your assets and much of your animations inside of sprite sheets, you reduce the amount of uploads that have to, to happen at runtime, and it reduces the load time. Um, and it reduces the memory footprint as well. So it's good. It's a good practice to use sprite sheets to define your animations. You set up different frames of your animation, or, or even if it's just not an animation, even if it's just one frame of an image that you want, to display, you, you could put it in a sprite sheet as well and just reference the, in, the, the, uh, um, the index of that frame and just display it in a sprite sheet, uh, display it with a sprite sheet renderer for, uh, uh, if you'd like. So let me, let me uh, give you a brief rundown of that. I have, a, I have artwork here that has many different frames. And these are individual frames and I use Texture Packer to, to pack these into a single um, image and it comes with a data file I'm not gonna open that it comes with a, a JSON data file that defines which um, frames uh, are what uh, what position so once that is imported I go to assets and I import the actual um, JSON file because this JSON is a JSON array file from um, Texture Packer. Game Builder Studio knows what to do with it and knows what it is. It looks for the image in the same directory, create, imports the image, and creates a sprite sheet. You can then take that sprite sheet, drag it onto the scene, and it'll set up everything for you. It'll set up the renderer and the sprite sheet for you. So this is a sprite sheet renderer, and all the frames, you can scrub through the frames and see the animation going on right here in the preview. Now, to control those, those frames and, and turn them into animation, you would have to use a uh, animation controller. Uh, let's see. So a sprite sheet controller is what I, ca I call an animation controller, but it's a sprite sheet controller. You, you, 
you would define which sprite sheet render this controller is going to control because this controller is going to cycle the the um, uh, the uh, frame index property on the render um, based on whatever animations you define inside of here. So you tell it which sprite sheet, you tell it from frame what from frame zero to whatever at a frame rate of 30 frames per second. You can tell it to loop or not loop. Uh, so this is uh, this is great for, for defining different animations of characters or 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 anything, a light switch coming on or, or what have you. There's also a new um, multi-image sprite sheet that you can add. Let's see. No, I don't think it's not in this build. It's coming, but th there's a multi-image sprite sheet where you can actually have a sprite sheet in here and define uh, the individual images uh, and make a sprite sheet here in the editor uh, without actually having to generate a sprite sheet uh, outside of the tool. Um, so that'll be coming uh, fairly, fairly soon. Uh, let's see. There will be additional importers. Um, there's there's some tools out there that that are um, that are coming up uh, for for biped animations or skeletal animations where you can have bones. It uses bones to animate characters and things like that. So we'll we'll have importers for those different uh, animations, and also uh, we're looking into a timeline importer so where you can animate. Uh, via a timeline in Flash Pro, for example, and then import that timeline animation in here and see it um, animate in exactly uh, the same. Um, but for right now, sprite sheets are, are, are the uh, primary way to do animations. And of course, uh, the like I said before, the uh, uh, the interpolate action. So let me just show you that quickly. There's another way for you to animate. So the interpolate property, you can point using a property reference, you can point to a property. Um, to the alpha value, and you can um, animate it from, if the current property of the alpha value is one, you can animate it to zero. You can do auto reverse to where it'll make it look like it's blinking, set duration, delay, easing values to do different effects. Um, and then you can actually, on completing this, uh, this animation, you can actually trigger another action to where you can start chaining different animations to happen one after the, after the, other, after the other. So those are two ways for you to do animations currently. All right, let's see. Collision detection. In Game Builder Studio, there's a, a real world physics engine built in um, that'll allow you to do uh, some pretty realistic simulations. Um, this, the properties for, for um, an object's behavior in the physics world exist on a physics spatial. So every spatial, currently, it starts as a physics spatial. It, it, it starts uh, with the physics properties already um, kind of set up for you with a collision shape and some shape properties like density, friction, uh, how bouncy it is, and things like that. Um, you can convert a spatial, I mean, you can actually add a basic spatial, which will, um, which will remove it from the physics simulation, because um, you, you don't want a ton of physics objects in your game if, you're not, if they're not going to be simulated. Uh, there's no need to, to, to have the overhead of that. Um, so you can always add a basic spatial, um, and then you know it, it won't be simulated. But this is where all of the, the physics uh, properties for an object exist. You can define custom shapes in here um, by drawing shapes over the image. You can delete these shapes. You can auto trace if you want. It'll do it'll, it'll do a fairly decent job of that. You'll have, uh, there'll be more controls added to this um, later on to where you can draw points to get even a finer detail um, and things like that. Uh, so this is uh, really helpful for realistic collisions. You can actually pan around the, scene, the, the uh, asset as well or scale it. If it's, if it's a really large asset, you can scale it, uh, scale it down a bit. Um, You can define materials. So 
game of the studio comes the the, the engine uh, the, the physics engine that comes with some predefined uh, materials rubber sand things like that and you, you go to settings you can open up these uh materials and you can define different uh, you know various materials if you want and then access those materials right here in the drop down or you can just uh instead of applying material you can define the property uh individually the properties that make up the material the, the shape material here and you have to select which shape you want to apply these settings to and if you have, you want to apply them to all you just hit this button here um, there are two types currently uh, of physics objects you have a simulated and non-simulated um, which is a simulated will allow the object to be affected by gravity and different forces uh, Non-simulated is pretty much just a static object that just exists in the world. And if you want an object to, to be in here that um, does not collide, it, it collides, but it doesn't actually get affected by collisions. So it doesn't stop, impede the progress of a character or, or, or stop anything. You would just tick this sensor and it'll convert it to a, a sensor object um, that could be used to detect, um, you know, proximity or something. For example, if, if you want to detect a certain radius around an object, maybe uh, if if an enemy gets close enough, you want to trigger something. You can you can make something a sensor, make a, a square or a circle a sensor, and then react to those different collisions or, or something like that. You can do things like that. And then of course you have um, collision filtering. So what that means is, um, if you want this character to only collide with the floor or only collide with um, a certain type of platform you would set um, you would set different types object types in here floor you know you would say a cloud and maybe you know maybe you want to do filtering this way you can you can go to the object go to its spatial and then define what type of object it is and and that'll allow you to do filtering of which uh, of which type of object this this uh, spatial can collide with, and what type of object this spatial actually represents. All right. I know I'm covering a lot here, so uh, just let me know if there's any uh, any questions. Um, all right, so let's let's just briefly take a look at the. Uh, the platformer's demo game. I have a little sample project here. I'm going to open that up. Just to kind of give you an idea how the scene is set up. Um, I have this floor here that's a tiled image. And then I just have like this uh, uh, transparent object overlaying it. And it is a static, a static object. So it will be, um, it will accept collisions. It just will not move. It will not fall with gravity. If this, if I do not have this here, but everything or the character, uh, which is a dynamic physics object, will just fall through into infinity. So it, it will land on this object and it won't um, go any further. Um, if I wanted a platform, I could create an object in here. And I could uh, just add a, a platform component. And then as the object, as the, uh, actually I actually have to set which spatial I want to be a platform, as this object, as this player rather, um, moves and jumps. It'll jump through, and it'll just land right here on top of on top of this character. So once again, it's just building building blocks, components being added to define different things. Um, every every uh, character in the game is going to have multiple states. You're going to have you're going to have. Uh, oh, hold on one second. I got a question. If, if you adjust the settings for the different physics surfaces, does that affect the editor for all levels or just the level you're editing? 
um, if if you change the settings, um, if you change the physics settings up here in terms of materials, this will be a global change to to, to the entire game. If you want individual um, settings per object, then you you would not uh, use a use a material. You would just define uh, the properties directly. I hope that answers your question. All right. Um, so, like I was saying, there there is a uh, um, every character has state. So, so there's a state machine component that manages state, and you can define uh, whether a character is idle. Um, whether, uh, you can define a state for jump, walk, and then you can use that state machine to uh, to have to add logic. So, if you change the property on the state machine, the current state property, if you change that state it's going to trigger an event notification on this other component which is logic for the state and on the state change to idle you want to play um, the idle animation for example or if, or if the state changes to jump you want to play the jump the jump animation of the sprite sheet um, so, and you can do various other add various other actions in here uh, to trigger different things um, so this is just building up uh, building up the functionality per component you can add scene. I have a scene tracker in here where I, where I used a track entity action to 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 uh, map the scene to follow this character as it as it moves. And then I have a player controller, which comes with the platform plugin as well, the platformer plugin, and it handles quite a bit of quite a bit of logic for you. So within a few steps, you can have a a, a, a platformer game that has a play a platformer uh, character. Um, platforms for you to actually uh, you know interact with whether it's a moving platform revolving platform uh, and all this is wrapped into the opponent so that's the power of, of uh, game builder studios if you you have custom functionality that you want to write or that someone else has written they can package it up in the components and share it on the marketplace or share it between each other um, um, so this this component manages um, a ton of properties the jump speed hang time, you know, how how fast the character has to be going in order for it to kill an enemy. Um, it manages different states. So as the character goes through different states in the platform or in the platform world, um, it will send state changes to the state machine. And you specify where the state machine is and you tell you map the different states to the internal states of this player controller and it will um, the, the player will, will react accordingly. And of course, you can set up user controls here and, and define filtering here as well. So fairly quickly, you can set up a, uh, um, a platform game with just a few components. All right, uh, so I'm doing time. Now, um, at a certain point, you may uh, uh, you may hit a ceiling, or uh, you may want to accomplish something that not, that's uh, not necessarily implemented in Game Builder Studio yet, or or uh, you just want to do something you know uh, completely custom. At any point in time, you can drop down in the code. Um, this is really powerful because you know I have this character here, or rather, I can just show you like I have this 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 block here and it's called lock block now I can drop down into my into whatever editor I want and I can actually access that I can say there, there's a lot there, there's a there's a number of videos on the support site that cover utilizing or, or, or understanding the game engine and, and the different um, um, you know functionality and, and options there are. So I'm just going to do a quick, uh, a, uh, it's probably not a good idea to do it, to do this live. Rather, instead of, instead of doing it, instead of doing a lookup, what, what I'll do is I'll just show you, um, how you could draw, for example, a shape over, over the scene. 
So if I if I say that this 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 file that I'm editing is the bin folder is in the bin folder. Every every project when you run it from Game Builder Studio it will generate this bin folder with source files. So it'll output code for you. It'll output the level files for you in XML. And uh, this is the main pod. This is the main uh, game class right here that I have open uh, in, in the code editor. And when the level's loaded, I'm going to draw a shape, um, a circle shape, and add it to the state. And that you can see when I when I launch the uh, when I launch the game. You'll be able to see a circle at the top, uh, in the top left corner. And the beauty, the beauty of this is that, I mean, at any point in time, whatever code changes you make. When you, when you run it in Game Builder Studio, you can easily see those changes. You'll get compile error, errors and things like that. So uh, it's pretty powerful. You can actually uh, change. This is the main game screen that represents what you see inside of Game Builder Studio. You can actually alter uh, what screen is shown at, at startup. You can, you can have your own screen manager in here to do different transitions if you want. Um, you have full access to everything uh, that you're seeing in the editor. Uh, you have full access to it in code. So this is great. This, this would be great for teams, for example. You can have designers inside the editor um, laying out uh, different files, different levels, and then you can actually have a uh, developer jump down in the code and write whatever custom functionality that's needed or, or what have you. So it's, it's, uh, it's a great workflow in, in that way as well. All right, let's, let's keep going. Publishing. In Game of the Studio, there's a new publish uh, window for you to publish to, to multiple platforms. This is a pro license only feature currently, so you uh, would have to upgrade via the uh, our website. If you go to gamebuildercudio.com slash pricing, and you click the buy now button, it'll, it'll uh, allow you to, to upgrade your license and you just reopen Game Boy Studio and you'll have access to this um, this publish uh, window. And you can publish a release, a production ready version of the game. It'll remove all of the debug um, drawings and, and uh, optimize it ready for production. It'll output the uh, uh, HTML file and Swift and whatever code you need to embed it into a website. Uh, you can also Focus to iOS. You'll have to do just like every other iOS developer. You have to create, you know, generate a certificate, um, go and register your pro your provisioning profiles, and then you just pass that here um, inside of the, the publish window. Give it a, a bundle ID, which is whatever whatever you you've set up uh, on the provisioning side. Give it a version, change different settings, give it a splash screen and some icons, and hit publish. And then you will have an IPA for you to actually um, deploy to your device. Now, in a, in, a, in a future update, you'll see a deploy tab here for you to actually just um, take that generated file, or it'll, it'll just be a one click kind of deployment to, um, uh, to the device for you to make it a lot easier. Currently, you'd have to open up, um, you'd have to open up like iTunes or something, for example, plug in your, um, your, uh, your device and, and drag the application over to get it on your device. And then Android is a little easier. We can actually create a, a self-signed certificate for you um, right right here. So you can set some, set the properties, um, define bundle IDs and all of that good stuff and, uh, and hit publish and you'll actually have a, uh, an a, uh, APK file for you to get on your Android device. So this will be improved as we go. But this is, uh, you can finally get your, 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 your game on the actual device, and uh, it, 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 it runs uh, really well. The, if, you, if you're building a debug version of, of the device build, 
the performance may suffer. So, you, so you don't want to go off of that when you when you you just want to use it for testing and to to, to visually see how things work. Um, but when you're ready for production, it'll be production speeds and um, uh, you know in a release version. All right. Uh, let's see. And question, and question. Okay, let's see. Okay, no, you the free version is not releasing is not available. You, you have to upgrade. Um, you have to upgrade to a pro license. Are there any other questions currently? Okay. Okay, one more is a question. Yeah, so you can build the user interface. So, for example, um, these are these are kind of like user interface controls here, uh, to where this is a you know a coin counter or what have you. And the way that um, uh, it, it stays stuck to the to the upper right corner of the screen is by creating multiple scene containers. So, because uh, because this object is on a different scene container from the actual game uh, character that is actually controlling this scene and, and panning this scene. Um, they will stay mounted to the to the top right of uh, of the screen um, and appear just like UI UI components. And you can set up logic in here to increase increase the counting. Um, you know, as as the as the uh, uh, character collects coins and, and things like that. So your UI can be set up um, inside of Game Boy Studio. And once again, if you wanted to drop down in the code, you could um, you could put your UIs outside of uh, you, you could build it outside of Game Boy Studio if you wanted to as well. It's flexible. And to create a, a scene container, you just click this. Create new scene up here, and then you add a scene layer, and then you can you can move objects by dragging dragging the layer, drop it on the scene layer, and it'll it'll move it to that scene layer. Um, very soon you'll have a delete button here to also delete a, a scene container if you if you no longer want it. All right, so uh, just to wrap up. A um, few gotchas. You cannot have spaces in your resource name, so uh, it's a good idea to make sure you don't have any special characters or spaces. Um, otherwise, the, the, the compiler will, will, will throw an error. Sound files need to be MP3s um, with a sample rate, I believe, of 128 megahertz. If you run your game after importing an asset and you don't save the game um, before you run it, uh, you'll get an error because the compiler doesn't know where the asset is coming from or where it is. If it's actually inside of the resource folder in, in your project, and then it won't do an error, and your resource folder is on the same level of the project, the .gbx file is a resource folder here of all the assets in your game. So if it's in there, it won't do an error, but if you import it from somewhere else in the computer, you may see an error, and, and that'll be why um, the, uh, the game won't launch. Um, you can you can hit the tilde key to, to view a console window. Also, that's helpful um, to to view errors and things like that. Uh, let's see. Um, the frame rate, like I mentioned, is not the frame rate that you're seeing when you're testing in Game Boy Studio is not the final release frame rate. So don't um, don't worry about that. When you release it, it'll be it'll be a a, 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 a different framework. Um, and you will also, if you're launching a game, you're seeing a blank a blank screen. You're going to need to add your a folder wherever you're putting your project files in Windows Studio. You're going to need to add that folder to the global um, Flash Player trusted settings. Uh, so make sure to do that so that you can uh, um, 
so the game can run with no problem. And the reason for this is that Game Studio may, uh, there, there, there may be plugins that need to access the internet for server calls, like the player IO, a plugin that's, uh, that's on its way for multiplayer um, uh, functionality is gonna need to make calls to the player IO servers. And, and Flash has uh, global security settings that restrict Swift from accessing the internet from your computer. So it's good to create a folder in your documents uh, folder, for example, um, and then uh, you know add it to the global trusted trusted uh, settings, and then everything underneath that folder will be trusted, um, and it will be able to run just fine. And just to give you guys a, a little rundown of the roadmap for 2013, uh, there's going to be a number of additional platforms. BlackBerry is going to be supported very soon. Kindle, um, uh, Facebook, and and the Ouya console, which we're really excited about. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna have videos and all these different um, deep dive videos on all these different platforms on how to get your, your game deployed to them. Um, we're gonna integrate additional physics components like uh, um, joints and constraints for you to do bridges, for you to do pendulums, different things like that. Um, we're going to integrate a particle system for you to simulate rain or, or, uh, or smoke or something like that. Um, uh -oh. One second. There we go. We're going to have uh, additional animation importers, like I mentioned. Possibly a flash timeline importer, um, skeletal animation importer. Uh, you'll have easier direct device deployment from the publish window. So you'll be able to hit a button and actually put that uh, um, file onto your device. Uh, there'll be additional native iOS, uh, native, native, I should say native iOS components, but native components. Uh, for example, iOS Game Center, iAds, uh, push notifications, Facebook login. But there will be different components to access device features on on uh, on all the different platforms uh, that you that you'll be deploying to, and this will and this will be of course um, uh, for for pro license uh, users. Um, and there will be new new plugins on the way as well. Roar Engine is a is a uh, server side social game mechanic, so you can do Farmville style uh, game mechanics set up tasks and rewards and achievements that can be collected. Uh, you, we're going to build a plugin in the Game Builder Studio where you can um, where you can interact with the service right from Game Builder Studio. Um, there'll be a Game Builder Viewer as well for uh, to reduce the time of testing on your device. You want to have a uh, the ability for you to, to reload your game um, uh, in real time uh, so, so, uh, so that you can see changes right away. Screens manager, where you can you can kind of storyboard your game. You can you can have a screen that starts as you know with, with certain components or something like that, and then it can transition to the actual uh, game simulation screen and go to a, a pause screen if you if you pause the game. Um, currently, you can do that with code right now in Game Builder Studio, um, but that that functionality doesn't exist directly uh, in the editor currently, but uh, right now, you have to do everything within the game scene itself. Uh, multiple device targets from one project. We don't necessarily like the solution of just scaling everything one size fits all. Um, ideally, you're going to have a, uh, the ability to set up different profiles. So if you want a profile for iPad, you want a profile for an iPhone, Android device, and then you can define different properties in your game that change based on what pl uh, platform you're actually writing for or, or what screen orientation you're writing for. That's something that we're, um, we're looking into for um, an easier way to do multiple device deployments from, from the same project. And uh, of course, additional components and actions will be added. Uh, a grid layout component, spreadsheet component for you to do, um, add, you know, you can add different uh, properties to a spreadsheet, add rows, uh, add columns, similar to like an Excel spreadsheet or, or a table, database table or something like that. Pause game action, time shift action. Um, like I said, the manual sprite sheet component where you can define individual images as frames. That'll be on its way very soon. 
um, and a tile map renderer, which is uh, going to allow you to render tiles from uh, um, the tiled editor, uh, layout editor. Um, it would just be an easier way for you to import that in the Game Gear Studio. This is in no given order, um, so so don't don't stick to this order. This is just uh, kind of a rundown of some of the things we're we're uh, targeting for this year. You can contact us uh, on Twitter, uh, Game Builders, Facebook.com slash Game Builders Studio, and we're going to be updating the blog uh, more frequently. Blog the blog blog dot com. And if um, you want to reach out to me directly, it's my, my email is levon at gamebuilderstudio.com. And uh, for any um, pro license uh, subscribers, I, I'm, I'm extending a uh, one on one session with me if you want to help you get started or, or work through some things if, if you would like. Um, so if, if you actually purchase a license and want to reach out and, and, and have a one on one session, just, just let me know. Yes, the new version does. The new version does support plugins. Um, there's a uh, there's documentation on on the writing plugins on the support dot game builder studio. Uh, yeah, support dot game builder studio dot com. Uh, if you go down to the uh, engine uh, section, you'll see. Um, tutorials on that. We're gonna we're gonna be writing more on that. And just so you know, um, just so you know, your plugins um, can be added to a if, if you when you install Game Builder Studio, it adds a Game Builder Studio folder to your Documents folder, and there's a plugin folder. And when you get a new plugin, you can take the Swift file. And drop it into this plugins and restart the end of the studio, and the new functionality will be um, inside the editor. Just, just so you know, it's as easy as that to to plug in a a, a, a plugin file. All right, um, so that's it. That's that's all I have for you guys today. If there's any questions, uh, we're going to be recording some videos and posting it to the Game Builder TV. A lot more of that will be. You'll start to see we're working on some games. Working, uh, you'll hear more news on that. Um, and we're also working on building some kind of sample game projects that are actually some complete versions, and and then actually providing you the the project files to to kind of dissect and and uh, work through how 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 it's all set up. Uh, is there any way to release the game you build with the free version? To release, no, you you can't, no, you can't release a final release version with the free version of Game Builder Studio. If you want to release a final release version, uh, you're going to need to upgrade to the Pro license. And there's an early supporter price that's uh, up on the site for a limited time, so I take advantage of that now because um, uh, it, it, it's going to go up um, after after a certain amount of time. Uh, isometric isometric games are still going to be um, implemented. The, the pro the pro license will allow you to have multiple game types. Currently, it's 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 been hidden from the editor because there's still um, some performance work that needs to be done for mobile on that. Um, if you are if you primarily just want to target um, web, we can you can email me and we could we could talk about it further, but um, the performance on, on mobile um, needs to be worked on, and uh, um, until that until that happens, we're not going to actually provide it um, publicly to everyone until we have the performance right um, for the isometrics and, 